solving quadratic equations. So in solving a quadratic equation there are sort of a number of steps you might go through in your mind to work out how you're going to do it. Um, and the first thing to realise is that you don't want to make life any more difficult than you need to. So quite often we can actually solve a quadratic equation just by rearrangement. So for example if the quadratic is in turning point form, don't go expanding that out and then trying to factorise it again. You can simply rearrange, add to both sides, square root both sides, etc. to get x on its own. So if the equation only has x in one place, you should be able to solve it using techniques you learnt in the early secondary years. If however you can't solve it by rearrangement, so it will have if it has an x squared and an x term in it, then you won't be able to isolate x and so we need to then be able to factorise. So you want to make one side zero, factorise the other side, use the null factor law to solve. Um, and if you can't factorise, you're going to resort to the quadratic formula which we'll talk about in a future video. Okay, so let's just work our way through a series of examples here. So in example one, I see that there is only x in one place in this equation here. So I should be able to isolate x just by undoing the operations that are around it. So I can see in my equation x is being squared, then it's being multiplied by 2, then 9 is being subtracted. So the first thing I'm going to do is add 9 to both sides. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 2. And lastly I will square root, remembering that when I take the square root, could have the positive or negative square root of 9 on 2. You can leave it like that, you could simplify it because square root of 9 is 3, so it should be 3 on root, oops, sorry, on root 2. Uh, you might also rationalise the denominator, so multiplying both the top and the bottom by root 2. All of these really are acceptable solutions to this equation. Okay, so in example 2, Again, we only have x in one place here, so we should be able to attempt to solve this by rearranging. So x is being squared, then we're adding 16. So we're going to subtract 16 from both sides. And then we're going to attempt to take the square root. But we have a problem. You can't take the square root of a negative value. So there is no solution to this equation. And it's not that you can't solve it by this method, it's not that you would need to use the quadratic formula, there is no solution. And if you think graphically about what's going on here, the graph of y equals x squared plus 16, well that's the parabola shifted up 16, and so clearly this doesn't ever equal zero, it doesn't have any x-intercepts, it doesn't ever cross the x-axis, so there aren't solutions to this equation. So bear in mind that not all quadratic equations will have solutions at all. Okay, example three. So here we have a quadratic. Now it's in brackets and in my experience students see brackets and they love to expand. So the first thing you're going to do is expand this and then you're going to realise that you have a quadratic trinomial, a harder quadratic trinomial and you're going to factorise it and you're going to end up back at this point <laughs> because we're already well on the way to solving here. So when solving a quadratic if you're going to be factorising, there are three steps basically. You want to make one side equal to zero, you want to factorise the other side, and then you want to use the null factor law. And the null factor law is all about the fact that if you're multiplying two things together, so if you've got AB is equal to zero, then that tells you that either A equals zero, or B equals zero, or both. And that's the whole premise of what's going on here. So that's the whole premise of the steps as well. So the first step is to make one side zero. That's so that you've, you can use the null idea of the null factor law. The next step is to factorise. That's so that you've got a product of two things on the other side. So you've got a product of two things equaling zero. And then you can use this idea behind the null factor law. So we've already got steps one and two done here in this equation. So now we can immediately use the null factor law. If, this, if these two brackets multiply together to give zero, then either this bracket is equal to zero which means that x must equal 4, or this bracket is equal to 0, which means that 3x is equal to negative 5, and so x is equal to negative 5 on 3. And so there are your two solutions to this quadratic equation. So don't launch into expanding. Think about what you're trying to do here. Okay, in example 4, 
So we're not going to be able to solve by simple rearrangement. We've got an x squared term and an x term, so we'll never be able to combine them together. Now, the other thing I see students do a lot here is it's very tempting to want to divide both sides of this equation by 3x. It's fine to divide both sides by 3, but you should never ever divide by x, the unknown. Because in dividing by x, what you're saying is you're assuming that x can't possibly equal 0. And in fact, x equals 0 is a solution in this equation, and you're going to lose that solution if you do that. So, same process here, we want to make one side equal to 0, we want to factorise, we want to use the null factor law. So making one side equal to 0, sorry 12x, we want to factorise, so the common factors here of 3 and x, which leaves us with x minus 4, and now we want to use the null factor law. So we could have divided through by 3 at the beginning if you want, but it doesn't really make any difference. Um, so our null factor law tells us that either 3x must be equal to 0, which means that x must be equal to 0, or x minus 4 is equal to 0, so x must be equal to 4. So please be careful about wanting to divide by the unknown in an equation. You should never ever do it. Alright, example 5. So here we have x squared equals 7x plus 8. So we're not going to be able to solve by rearrangement because we have an x squared and an x term. So we're going to try to factorise. So first we need to get everything on one side. So x squared minus 7x minus 8 equals 0. Uh, and now we wish to factorise the left hand side. So we identify it as a simple quadratic. So we should be able to write down a solution. We're looking for factors of negative 8 that add up to negative 7. So we're going to need 8 and 1. So it'll have to be negative 8 and positive 1 to add to negative 7. And now we're ready to use the null factor law, which tells us if these two brackets multiply together to give 0, then either this bracket is equal to 0, or this bracket is equal to 0. Alright, so example 6. Okay, so we've got one side equal to 0 already. We wish to factorise the left-hand side. Now, because we have a negative in front of the x squared, this isn't a simple quadratic. But it's very, very easy to make this into a simple quadratic, and you can think about this in a number of different ways. So we could think about the multiplying everything in this equation by negative 1, which would give us x squared minus x minus 42 equals 0. You could also think about it as moving everything onto the right-hand side, so adding x squared to both sides, subtracting x from both sides, and subtracting 42 from both sides. But either way, you're going to end up with this quadratic equation. Okay, so we've got one side equal to zero. We're attempting to factorise. We've made life easier for ourselves now that we've um, rewritten things so that we have a simple quadratic. And so we're now looking for factors of negative 42 that add to negative 1. So 6 times 7 is 42, and we'll need negative 7 and positive 6 for the numbers to work. So x, minus, x plus 6 could equal 0. So x is negative 6 is one of our solutions, or x minus 7 could equal 0. So x equals 7 is the other possible solution. Okay, so example 7. Okay, so again, we can't solve by rearrangement. We have an x squared term and an x term. So we're going to attempt to use the null factor law. So we made one side zero. We're going to try to factorise the left-hand side. Um, so we see that it's not a simple quadratic and it doesn't have common factors. So we're going to need to use the harder quadratic method. So I'm going to multiply 3 times 6. And I go through this method in a bit more detail in the previous video on factorisation. Though there are different ways you can factorise a quadratic of this form. So do it how you wish. Uh, I'm going to do it this way. So we do 3 times 6 and then we're looking for factors of this number, 18, um, that sum to give 11. So factors of 18 that sum to give 11, so 9 and 2. So I'm now going to replace the 11x term in the middle here with 9x plus 2x. And you can write that in whichever way around you want. You'll end up with the same answer. So we're not changing the equation here. So we've still got 3x squared at the beginning. We've still got 6 at the end. We've simply taken that one term, 11x, and broken it up into two terms. And now we're going to factorise by grouping. So we're going to divide in half. So we're going to look at common factors in the first two terms. So 3x, which leaves us with x plus 3. And then common factors in the second two terms, which is 2, which again leaves us with x plus 3. 
we know we're on the right track here because the brackets are the same and that's important because the bracket now becomes the common factor. So x plus 3 is a common factor and we'll be left with 3x plus 2. Okay, so now that we've factorised, we can use the null factor law. So we know that x plus 3 is equal to 0, so x is equal to negative 3. Or 3x plus 2 is equal to 0, so 3x is negative 2, x is negative 2 thirds. And there's our two solutions. Okay, now final example, we have an equation that doesn't immediately look to be a quadratic equation. And this can happen in many different forms. Um, so what we want to do though is manipulate this equation and what we'll find is it ends up being a quadratic equation to solve. So we have an equation involving fractions. So whenever I have an equ equation involving fractions my first aim is to get rid of the fractions and I'm going to do that by writing every term in the equation with a common denominator. So I want to write every term in the equation with a common denominator which in this equation is x squared. So looking at the first um, term, I've multiplied the denominator by x squared, so I need to do the same to the numerator. In the second term, I've multiplied the denominator by x, so I need to do the same to the numerator. And in the term on the right-hand side, I haven't done anything to the denominator. Now that I have that common denominator, multiplying both sides of my equation by x squared eliminates my fractions, and we now have this. There are many different ways to get to this point. Um, but essentially what you're doing in any process is finding a common denominator and multiplying by that common denominator. Okay, so now we need to make one side equal to zero. And we want to attempt to factorise the left-hand side. Uh, so we're looking for factors of negative six that add up to positive one. So positive three and negative two. And then we can use the null factor law. So x plus 3 is equal to 0, which means that x equals negative 3. Or x minus 2 is equal to 0, which means that x equals 2. So as I mentioned earlier, there are a number of different quadratic equations which we might not be able to solve by factorisation. So for example, if this had been a 7 at the end here, there aren't factors of negative 7 that add to 1. So we can't use the null factor law to solve. And in cases like that, we want to use the quadratic formula. And we'll be talking about the quadratic formula in a future video. So stay tuned for that one.